Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel in honor of Harry and Meghan's wedding. I'd like to show you how I do afternoon tea. I was asked to show you some of my favorite teas and tea products and how I brew it. And I figured I'd make it into a fun party for us to share. So here we go. So I'm going to boil the water on my stove, but you can also use your Keurig or a, an electric teapot. When you boil it on your stove, you want to make sure that when it comes to a boil, you turn it off, set the timer for two minutes, and let it sit and cool down a tiny bit. So full disclosure, I'm not an expert. This is just me and what I've learned and I'm sharing it with you. So if you're a British person or English by birth and you disagree with everything that I'm about to say, I apologize. This is just what I've learned from the different tea houses I've gone to and what I've learned from TV. Okay? So let me share with you my knowledge. So first of all, I have two teapots because I'm going to bring two pots of tea. So I'm just going to show you some of the varieties that I have and if I've tried them and how I like them. Okay? So... Um, this jar looks like the jars from the Dollar Tree, but this jar was actually from Five Below. It had candy in it when I got it. And I didn't do any great antiquing technique to the top. I actually put it in the dishwasher, and this is how it came out, which I love. Um, but what I put in here is when you get a Celestial Seasoning Teas, they come in a box, in a bag, in a like wax paper bag. And um, I like to put transfer them to some airtight container. So this particular one is in this jar. It's a pretty airtight container. You have to struggle a little bit to get the top off, which is great. And this is Sleepy Time Extra. And this isn't necessarily a varietal of tea that I drink unless I need to go to sleep. But I wanted to share with you how I store the Celestial Seasonings teas. These Tavives are from the Dollar Tree. I have yet to taste them. This one is blueberry and this one is chai. Um, I just haven't opened them yet because of the amounts of the varieties that I already have. And as far as the blueberries tea is concerned, I have a blackberry vanilla herbal tea that I have gotten from Lipton and I love. And it comes in these great triangular packages. And I actually think that we might brew this today. That might be the one that may, that might be one of the ones that we brew today. Here is another um, was a candle jar just to show you how we upcycle um this is mint medley with which both mom well we all drink it but mom um especially in gym when they have upset tummies they like mint medley or actually sinus infections too sometimes that helps and this is an old uh, yankee candle candle jar that i have cleaned out ran through the dishwasher and i'm using this to store the tea bags and i just cut the label off the box and put it on the outside so these are Bigelow teas. I love them. This is American breakfast tea. It says 50% more caffeine than it used to have. And a portion of the proceeds go to support our troops. Yay. Um, but what I like about Bigelow tea is on the back, they give you a capo meter, which basically shows you how much caffeine is in each types of tea. Um, so this American breakfast tea has almost as much caffeine as a cup of coffee, which is nice if you don't like coffee, but you need that boost in the morning as well as the cinnamon stick. The cinnamon stick is a black tea. And it also has the same, well actually it's not the same as the American tea. It has half as much as a cup of coffee. So if you see it's got the same meter on the back is what I was gonna say. Okay. Now what I never told you is mint medley is a combination of peppermint and spearmint, caffeine free herbal tea. Um, the blackberry vanilla is caffeine free as well and if you read the ingredients it'll tell you what type of tea leaves it uses I don't have any loose teas currently because I don't live anywhere near a place where you can buy them so there's I, I just don't have any <laughs> so Twining's Irish breakfast tea um, is one of my favorite like I don't know, I wanna say in place of coffee. I don't think that in place of coffee is right. But um, if, I, if I'm if i having like a, if my tummy's not wanting cap, uh, the coffee, but it really wants the caffeine, how's <laughs> that? <laughs> That's a good way to put it, right? Okay, so it shows you a bunch of stuff. Now, if you're new to tea, you just go to the aisle, spend some time, lean over and read the boxes. The boxes give you all kinds of information about Serving suggestions. See that? 
Isn't that cool? And then recipes, of course. Okay, and this one says it's actually expired. Don't look at my tea bags that expired. I never had sour tea from being expired. I'm just saying. So these two are from Kroger from their private selection. Sorry about that. This one is peppermint herbal tea, caffeine free. It's a blend of peppermint leaves. <sighs> this one is sweet cinnamon spice herbal tea. So it's got cinnamon, ginger root, rose hip, orange peel, and peppermint. Okay, so this is mom's tea jar. <laughs> Mom likes to mix the mint medley with Lipton orange pico, like regular <laughs> Lipton. Sorry about that. This must be Jim's new tea jar. So what we do is when we get a celestial seasonings, we end up putting it in a Ziploc bag. So Jim has some cinnamon apple spice. He really enjoys this. And this is what I do with a celestial seasonings if I don't put it in an airtight canister. I put it in a Ziploc bag and then it goes in his tea jar. Another one he has in here is some sleepy time. This is original sleepy time, which actually can go in your jar if you want to go get your jar. Don't you have a sleepy time jar? No, I don't. I don't think I don't think of it. I thought you did. Is it sleepy time sinus? And here is some more sleepy time extra. And that's the end of Jim's. <laughs> okay. And my teas, I tend to lean a little towards the fruity and regular, my one of my favorite teas is Tension Tamer, <laughs> which I just found. So my favorite is the Tension Tamer, and I think we're going to brew some of this today. We're going to brew a pot of this today. So with the directions, you know, they give you directions on the boxes. Are you done with this? Yeah, you can bring it back to the counter. Thank you. So with the directions, they tell you how much water each teacup, each pot, you know, possibly makes. So let me show you the other one. So this pyramid bags, they give you directions. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, they don't give you directions? How do they not give you directions? Oh, here. <laughs> for a delicious cup of hot tea, pour boiling water over a tea bag and brew four to six minutes as to, or to desired strength. And... The Tension Tamer, I'm going to list the ingredients down below because I don't have the box anymore, but it's basically a combination of um, chamomile tea and different, and this is chamomile tea. These are caffeine free. Chamomile is supposed to be calming. Tension Tamer has chamomile in it. It is also calming. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to put some tension tamer in here. Um, since it's four to six ounces, and this is uh, one quart, I'm gonna pour one quart of water, which is 32 ounces. I can put anywhere from five to eight bags, really, if I want to. Actually, you know what, why don't we do four bags, and I'll do just a pint of water. And I'm gonna do the same for this pot of blackberry vanilla. Aren't these tea bags pretty? <laughs> the blackberry tea said pour boiling water over here, but what I always learned about, about making tea was to boil the water, turn it off two, and let it cool off two minutes per quart, okay, so that it comes to the proper temperature so you don't scald your tea. But then I've learned as I got older that not all teas boil like, I'm mean, not all teas brew like that. So here we go. So let's pour some boiling water. Minus two minutes in there. And some boiling water. And there goes a paper. Ah, two papers. <sighs> And we cover them so that they brew. Then we set our timer for two, four to six minutes. So um, while everything is brewing, while we have a few minutes, I just wanted to talk to you about like Lipton tea, like everybody's favorite Lipton tea. 
It's naturally proactive antioxidants. And then here we have some Nest Tea Decaf. So it's orange, pico, and cut black tea leaves. And I was pretty sure that's what Lipton is as well. So this is a tea, disp tea bag dispenser. Have you ever seen this? Okay. Um, so when you go to like a restaurant or a diner or whatever, and they don't offer you herbal tea, they just have tea, then usually it's Lipton, which is that regular everyday tea blend that we're, you know, here in the United States, we call tea. <laughs> I'm trying to see, okay. Let's see, does it tell you in the package? Oh, but it's got a website. I was pretty sure that's what it was. I thought on the, on the outside they used to tell you. But I think it's orange, pico, and black tea. Um, so some more things to show you while we're waiting for the tea to brew is um, variety of tea accoutrement. <laughs> so these little tiny roosters that I got at Cracker Barrel are tea bag holders. So um, I personally like to use my tea bag twice. I don't squeeze it because then that lets bitters out anyway. So what I do is I let it drip over the tea cup when I make just a cup of tea and I put it in here and then when I'm ready for a second cup I go ahead and I take it off here put it back in the cup and start over. So these come in I had ones with roses on them ones that were tea shaped ones that are teapot shaped ones that are forever. <laughs> these three are um, when you have loose leaf teas. So here's a different variety of things that you could do with loose leaf teas. So this right here is a tea scoop. It's what they called it at Ikea. And what you can do is when you have a loose tea, you can actually scoop it in there instead of measuring, but you can also measure and put it in there if you're a measurer. And what you do is you sit it in like you would a tea bag. You pour your water over, you let it steep, and then you remove it. Um, the same thing with the tea bowl. This tea bowl opens by twisting. This one has a chain, so you fill it with the tea of your choice. Um, the chain is, you can actually put this on the handle of the teacup. I'm sorry, you can actually put this on the handle of the teacup while the tea bowl sits in there and steeps. And the same thing, um, you let it steep for as long as the tea is permitted to. Now, as long as the recipe calls for, depending on the type of tea you have. Um, and then you drain it off and let it sit on your tea plate. And then this one is sort of like my favorite fancy one that I got mom. It is two part and it has this basket. And what you do is you put the tea leaves in the basket, you pour your water over it, through it, and then you see it does have some bigger holes that some fine tea might actually fly through, which is okay. And when you're done letting it steep, so you fill your water up to there, so you let it steep, and when you're done letting it steep, the whole thing goes right back in its own little holder, which is wonderful. I think it's so elegant and pretty. Okay, so now, the last thing is my fancy teaspoons. <laughs> so I just got these when I had a teapot collection. Um, and I just thought they were so darling and they sit on my coffee bar for whenever you might need just a, a hint of sugar. But uh, teaspoons, every time I've gone to a tea house, has not been the American teaspoon. It has been something about this size to help you put sugar in your tea. Okay? So the next thing I wanted to show you is just my own little personal collection of little milk containers to serve milk in. Um, I got this as a four-pack from Bath & Body Works when it was on about... Bed Bath & Beyond on clearance, and I got four of them for $1.50, which was a steal. Um, they came in a four-pack because when you're having, like, dinner parties, you don't want to have to sh shout to the edge of the table to have somebody pass your cream. Some of these, I have to tell you, were given to me from special occasions, like um, when we went to fancy hotels and restaurants, and I was I'd, I would comment on how cute it was and how lovely to have one, and then waitstaff would hand them to me or gift it to me. It was so lovely. Um, I have all different varieties. This one is actually like a mini water jug, but of course you can use it for cream. This one has its own little plate and a matching sugar bowl. And sort of my two, not two favorites, but two of the ones that I love so much is this little cow and this little duck. <laughs> this little cow and this little duck are super cute and I'm pretty sure they came from the dollar store. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. I feel like that's where they came from. 
um, but I just love them so much. So now that's everything. We're gonna have some tea. So earlier in their day, I'm gonna show you um, how I put together our afternoon tea. Um, this is very American version of the afternoon tea that they may serve in England. <laughs> but I figured it was only fitting seeing as an American is marrying the one of the princes. So um, this is my American version of afternoon English tea. <laughs> um, now, when I've gone to different high teas at um, different tea houses on Long Island or in New York, um, I would have variations of different finger sandwiches. So this particular one would have been a lot neater if the bread wasn't squished. <laughs> but this little, this particular one is just whole wheat bread with cream cheese. I really, 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 really wish I had cucumber because actually really thin slices of cucumber and cream cheese is a delicious sandwich. And I know it sounds so weird, but it really is delicious. And traditionally, well, traditionally every tea place I've ever been to it's always been crustless, crustless triangles is what they use for finger sandwiches. Now, don't throw out the crust. It's always a snack for the cook later. <laughs> the other one um, that I'm going to make is um, what they call egg and mayonnaise. <laughs> but it's just my version of egg salad. I do put a little dry mustard in it. And it's traditionally served with watercress, but I don't have any, so I'm just using a piece of lettuce, which I'm actually going to forget to put, as I'm going to tell you that I'm going to forget to put it as I start to slice it. But just a thin layer in it of egg salad, not what we would normally do for a sandwich. Um, much more delicate than that. We want just a very, very thin layer. Um, but other variations are chicken salad or tuna salad, any type of of thing that you can think of. Um, like I said, cucumber sandwiches are very traditional. And I've, as a matter of fact, every time I've ever had high tea, it's been with cucumber sandwiches, almost always. Um, now, one of the things that I'm going to do is take an inexpensive shortcut. So... One of the things that I like is the fact that we can do this on a budget. You can really have a fancy tea party. Um, you can do it with the kids. The kids love it. Girls love tea parties. Um, but what you could do is you can do it on a budget because this egg salad is made with one egg and two slices of bread. And this is going to be enough for me and Jim. So it's basically two sandwiches, and then instead of scones, I'm taking a shortcut, and I'm just using canned biscuits. Now, canned biscuit is a step away from a scone. However, it does have that same feel. It's sort of um, butter, flour, um, very similar ingredients. It's just basically how you're handled it. Um, very similar to our um, biscuits that we keep here in the United States. I've just squeezed some of the reduced, reduced sugar jelly into um, a pretty serving dish. Um, and now I'm going to make the Americanized version of, no, it's actually just, um, the Pioneer Woman has some, f not fake, what does she call it? Uh, oh, Devonshire cream, in, clotted cream inspired something I don't know it's fake clotted cream <laughs> so clotted cream is traditional spread in England um, it I've had it actually um, before and it's actually very good and this but this is really good this isn't exactly tastes just like it but it is really good and what this is is one part butter to one part sour cream to two parts cream cheese so the recipe that I'm using for just me and Jim is two tablespoons of whipped cream cheese, one tablespoon of sour cream, and one tablespoon of softened room temperature butter. Um, I think that the uh, if I'd have my druthers, I'd probably use the unsalted butter, but I just used regular table butter because we keep that on the table and it's always um, room temperature for us. Okay, and then you just want to blend them together to make sure you've really incorporated all the ingredients. Okay, and I'm just using a rubber spatula, and I'm at going at two times speed. <laughs> oh, here you go. Now you can see it. There we go. And you just make sure that it's all blended and incorporated really well. And then I'm going to have my taste tester come on over and give it a taste. My, my European 
world traveler. <laughs> but anyway, I got this recipe from the Pioneer Woman, and it's sort of um, a homemade version of a quick knockoff sort of um, clotted cream. It doesn't taste exactly like it, but clotted cream takes like 12 hours to make or even longer, depending on who you, who's making it. But this is actually just a really nice cream spread um, to go on the biscuits to serve with the biscuits or scones and the jelly. Okay. And when I've had, um, when I used to belong to homemakers, we had a, a, a woman who was from um, Great Britain. She was born and raised there. Um, she moved here as an adult and she, she served us high tea. Um, and what she actually used was homemade whipped cream. She said it was um, the closest thing that she could find here in the States. Um, but when I found this recipe, I was like, oh yes, let's have this. <laughs> Now we're going to prep dessert, and this is my favorite part. <laughs> we're going to do a shortcut of fancy desserts. Um, what I've done is, because it's just for the two of us, so again, I only want two servings, is I've taken a Little Debbie strawberry roll. This is strawberries and cream rolled up in a shortcake. And I'm cutting little rounds. I'm trying to be very careful, and again, cleaning my knife between so that not to spread the cream onto the pretty cake. If you're doing this for a four-year-old, I don't think it makes a difference, but if you're doing it for your girlfriends or you're doing like an afternoon Sunday tea, um, you want to go ahead and take that extra effort just to make it that pretty, that, that much prettier, okay? So then what I'm going to do is um, I've cleaned and washed four of the tiniest strawberries I can find in my container. <laughs> and I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to pierce the side of the strawberry. I'm pulling the leaves back through the strawberry and then through the round cake. And I'm just making a cute little dessert, just a little fancy. And I'm putting it in these dollar, these cupcake papers that I got from, actually the black and white ones were on clearance from Walmart. Okay, but they have like this silver lining and I just thought that they were fancy. And then I'm going to repeat with all four strawberries. And the next thing, Jim found these Little Debbie cakes. Um, they are a devil's food cake with white frosting. I was trying to find the white cakes that are like octagonal shape, but he, this is all he could find. So we thought, okay, we can make some little pedophores out of this, you know, mock pedophores. So I'm taking my knife and I'm using the same technique, making sure I clean it off each cut just to make it fancy. I'm cutting the edge frosting off and I'm going to cut each one of them into quarters. So basically, Jim and I are sharing a strawberry roll and a... Little Debbie half this pack cake. <laughs> this one has chocolate cake with white cream, white frosting, and little chocolate chips on top. And I'm putting them into mini cupcake papers. These ones are silver, and they just make it look that much fancier. And I'm plating them with some tea biscuits that I got with chocolate on one side. And they're sort of like traditional biscuits, not sweet cookie, but with chocolate on them, which makes them American. <laughs> um, so here's how it looks all together. I have this three-tiered tray with plates. And those are all the snacks set up for you. And now we're going to go ahead and get ready to serve our tea. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take the tea bags out. Um, my time is up. My six minutes are over. Um, and just clean up your teapot. And I've just rested them in a bowl. And then with the um, bags with no strings, we just use a pretty slotted spoon. And I am double timing this for you guys. So you just let it sit over the teapot just for a second or two. And then we can get dressed and get ready to have tea. So this is what I decided to wear. If you see in the corner, I've made my fancy hat. This is my $1.99 hat from the 99 cent only store I got last summer. And I've just pinned the top up with a brooch. Um, and then this dress I got on clearance at Target for $3.50. And I love it. And um, now I'm just going to show you what we did. So when I first went to my first high tea, afternoon tea, with my friend Joyce... We were instructed to eat from the bottom up. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know if that's a rule all the time, but that's the way we were taught at that house, so that's how I served it here. I put the biscuits on the bottom, and we ate those with the clotted cream, well, faux Devonshire cream, and the jelly, and that's up to you. That's totally optional how you want to eat them. 
And then the next thing, oh, and we had that with the um, tension tamer, which is a chamomile, peppermint. Um, it's just a ginger root. It's just a whole bunch of beautiful, lovely tasting teas. Um, and then the next course was the finger sandwiches. And Jim opted not to have the uh, cream cheese and what would be cucumber sandwich <laughs> on the whole wheat bread. He left that for me. He's so sweet. And um, we're going to have this with the blackberry vanilla tea. Um, I just thought it was such a lovely um, sweet to go with the um, tart, tangy sort of cream cheese. And um, with the lettuce and egg salad, it was just so nice. Um, and <laughs> we're really enjoying ourselves a little bit too much, I think. I was laughing really hard because Jim just was not eating them very daintily as you would when you eat with your girlfriends <laughs> and finally we're going to have tea choice so if you preferred whichever tea you preferred preferred you can have with dessert and we're going to have the strawberry shortcake and strawberries um and the vanilla pedophores or the chocolate pedophores as well and i'm using my toothpick because it's dainty So that's it everybody. I hope you really enjoyed this insight into my favorite teas and how I prepare them and then a little bit of a celebration of the new royal couple. Congratulations to Meghan and Harry. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in seeing how I prepare tea, some of my favorite teas, and how to put together a tiny little afternoon tea service. <laughs> And if you haven't yet, click subscribe, and when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.